Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Minnesota Twins preview. That's right, this is being called the biggest series in target field history. The Minnesota Twins and the Cleveland Indians going head to head for four games at target field starting today. This is going to be absolutely crazy. Not only because the standings are so close, but this could be the end of Cleveland season. If Minnesota, you know, takes three or four maybe, or this could switch it. You know, I don't remember the last time Cleveland was in front of the division. Maybe like the second game of the season, third game of the season or so. I don't know. Maybe they haven't. I don't, I don't really remember. But the point is, this could decide the rest of the season. And if this doesn't, we have Milwaukee coming up in Milwaukee. We also get Boston in Boston. And then probably, if this isn't the biggest series of the season, the one in September, September 6th, 7 and 8. That Cleveland series will be. But this one, four games, which could decide if Cleveland stays in the hunt or if the Twins can pull away or if, you know, it switches. So it's going to be fun. Um, you know, like I said, four games. Everybody except for Perez is going for the Twins and Pineda because he's hurt. So it's going to be uh, Gibson, game one. Smeltzer. Game two, Oda Rizzi, game three, and to round things out, Barrios, game four. Now, I'll be straight up with you guys. I'll be honest. I think we can take three of four. I'm not going to lie. I think we can take three of four. Bieber against Smeltzer, that is probably going to be our worser game than any other ones. I know Clevenger's been good, but I don't even know who um, Pollute. Pol Pluntko, I don't, I probably said his name wrong. Never heard of the guy before for Cleveland. And then Saval, 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 um, that dude right there, he is one and one, came off a pretty bad loss against um, Mike Miner. So I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. But like I said, we could easily split this series. Barrios and Odorizzi going up against two guys who aren't part or who weren't part of of this Cleveland four, Cleveland five starting pitching. We've got those those two guys are basically our best two pitchers. I mean, you could argue Gibson and Odorizzi kind of maybe interchange now since the second half of the season. But the point is, we should at least split with these guys. There's no excuse not to split. And that would, that would I mean, I'd be okay with the split. I don't know about you guys. Obviously, I'd want to take three, maybe even sweep them. But to, we can't get swept one, and we can't let them win more games than we do, right? A split would keep this, the, the season uh, division at two games. I think that's what it is right now is two games. And that would, I mean, no harm, no foul, right? You would just keep the, the same distance. Of course, again, you'd like to see them win more, but if it doesn't, I don't think anybody would necessarily complain with the split. But let's go through the matchups because that's what we're here for. Can we actually squeak out three, maybe even sweep them? It'll be hard, but this first game tonight, this is going to be a real telling tale of how we do. I mean, you look at the last series coming off the Braves, Kansas City, Miami, Chicago, back to the New York series, basically, right? Chicago, we absolutely dumped on them a couple of times, 10-3, to 6-2. We lost 5-1, to one, but then we skunked them again. Uh, 11 to 1. The Marlins, we took the series. That's what matters. 2 to 1. Sometimes that happens. Then 7 to 4, and we lost the final game. We all know how that went. But then we came back. Kansas City, 11 runs, 3 runs, or shutout, and then uh, 11 more runs. And Atlanta. This is where we're getting at right here. We put up, we won the first game. We walked them off, right? 5 to 3. But then we put up 7 runs and 7 runs. Granted, they'd put up more, yeah, but we could. 7 runs versus Cleveland? That has shown to be enough multiple times this year. Go back to the the first series. I mean, the first the, the last time we played them, no team scored more than six runs. Seven could be enough, and we've been hitting the ball well. It's just our pitching that's been kind of struggling. So let's go through the matchups. All right, let's see what we can do. Gibson, we'll start with him because he's pitching tonight. Like I said, this is going to be the biggest game of the series right here tonight, I think. Uh, he is a four ERA. Not bad. Really that's not bad. He's 11 and 4. That's pretty good for Kyle Gibson. His whip 1.25. Not bad at all. 124 strikeouts. Looking at his last, let's just go last four starts. He's got three wins and the one loss came to the Yankees when we lost 14 
to 12. That was a crazy game, as you all know. He didn't get the loss in that one, but, uh, you know, that's not bad. He has only lost one game in his last 10 starts. So there you go. Uh, and that was back against Boston when we lost 9-4 to on June 19th. Other than that, he's got four wins and a couple of no decisions. But that is a very good uh, good for Kyle Gibson. He's done really well. And if he can get us six innings, if every one of our pitchers can get us six innings, I think we'll be okay for this series. Then let's go to Clevenger. Like I said, this is probably their best guy. Maybe Bieber, I guess you could argue he's done really well this year. But Clevenger, a 3 ERA, 6-2 and two record, 80 strikeouts, a whip of 1. This guy has been good in his last 10 starts because he... Has he been injured? Is that what was up with him? Um, he's been off, I guess. So his last 10 starts pretty much span the entire season. But in his last four, he has gotten four straight Ws. In his last six starts, he's gotten five Ws and a no decision. If you go back all 10 of his starts this season, he's only lost two games. It was Toronto and Texas. So he's faced some, eh, you know, iffy teams, I guess, with you know, the Angels, uh, Minnesota, the White Sox, but he's also faced Baltimore, Kansas City, Kansas City, Toronto, um, faced Toronto again. Uh, so he's he's a kind of iffy, you know. Let's, we'll see how he does against Minnesota again. But like I said, that is going to be the matchup to watch tonight uh, at 7, 10 p.m. That is going to be a good game. So let's go to tomorrow because it's not Pineda. It is Smeltzer, and I know Smeltzer's done really, really well as of late. He's got a 2.2 ERA, 1-1 one one record, 21 strikes, a whip of under 1 at .9. That's really good for a rookie. I mean, he got his first win against Kansas City, right? He's played in five games. Uh, he has lost one, won one. He's also been um, kind of all over the place, I guess. But uh, really, he doesn't give up a lot of runs. Besides Cleveland in his second start of the season, um, he's done well. He's done very well. He has not given up more than one earned run in a start so I don't see why uh, didn't he pitch out of the bullpen one time too in there? Maybe I'm maybe I'm uh, missing that. But the point is, uh, the point is, yeah, he pitched out of the bullpen a couple of times. But the point, and he's gonna get you innings. He is a guy who's not gonna give up a lot of runs. So if we can get, you know, if this tonight, let's just say we light up Clevenger, which would be absolutely great. Tomorrow, if our bats start to go a little bit, if Smelter can still get us six or seven innings, maybe giving up only one run. I think we have a really good chance because Bieber's not going to give up a lot of runs either, right? Bieber has been really good. Uh, he's got a 3.3 ERA, 11-4 record, 182 strikeouts, a whip of under 1 at .98. And this is a guy who's been solid. I mean, almost every time out uh, in his last five starts, he's got three wins, one loss, and a no decision. But if you go back even farther, seven starts, he's got five wins, one loss, and one decision so he's been very good he's played against houston the angels minnesota cincinnati i mean those are not bad teams right but he's also got in there kansas city toronto uh, baltimore kansas city again so it'll it'll depend on which you know team he gets to face right is it going to be the twins team that struggles to put up runs which more than likely will be the case for Bieber, or is it going to be the guy who is going to come out and just get lit up by this uh, offense? That'll be a fun game to watch, too. Um, Smelt to the rookie going up against Bieber, who has been lights out pretty much. So those two games are are the two that I would say, if Cleveland wins, they're going to get those two games. The next two games, Minnesota should be able to lock it down. We'll start with Oda Rizzi. He's been kind of all over the place, you know, as well. But a 3.61 ERA, 12-5 and record. That's really good. He's got 120 strikeouts, 1.1 whip. He's been iffy, right? It depends if he can get his pitches working, right? He's got a very good high fastball. If he can locate that and get people to strike out on that, he's going to be fine. But when he starts working into long at-bats, long counts, he's going to get in trouble. And he has struggled over the last, you know, 10 or so games. He's won... Four of his last 10 games, three losses, and a couple of no decisions in there as well. But really, he doesn't give you a lot of bad starts. He did give up, you know, nine earned runs against the Yankees. That was pretty bad. But other than that, one earned run, one earned run, three earned runs, one earned run, five earned runs. And that's, you know, that was a loss to Oakland. That was really bad as well. But other than that, it's been solid. And I think if we get that good Odorizzi, he'll be fine. And even if we don't, right? I mean, 
a couple of the games have been really good for him, uh, like the two to one win in Miami, the three to one, the three to five win in uh, Atlanta or against Atlanta. That he was able to, sh you know, contain them. I guess is the right word. He's going up against a guy who I've never heard of. Like I said, he has not pitched a, a lot, um, but uh, he's he. I don't Adam Pluto, 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 um, four point five ERA. 4-2 record, 36 strikeouts, a whip of 1.15. In his last couple of starts, he's got his, uh, he was 4-2, and two, right? So he just got his fourth win in his last start versus the Angels. Other than that, you go down the list. Boom, 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 boom. He's been knocked out pretty early. Five innings, four innings, four innings, four innings. Um, and he's gotten the no decisions in those games. So it's, it's because Cleveland's offense picks him up, right? But this guy is proof that... If the Twins can light them up, and they'll stay on it, if our pitching is halfway decent, we should be able to win this game. So I don't see, you know, Oda Rizzi falling completely apart. He's done well in his last couple of starts. If he can locate that fastball, I think he'll be good. And the last, the last one, which we should win with Barrios on the mound. You would think. I mean, last time he came out though, he gave up nine earned runs, which is a season high, and he of course got the loss versus Atlanta, a tough loss there, but. Really, I mean, he has been so solid, you know, 3.2 ERA. That obviously went way up. He was fourth in the league at 2.8 before this. 10-6 and six record, 140 strikeouts, a whip of 1.15. He, I mean, in his last three starts, has two wins besides the Atlanta loss. In his last five starts, he's got two wins with two no decisions. Uh, but a couple of tough games there. I mean, 4-5, to 3-4, to 2-7, to 4-6 to six in those losses. So it's, if we could get run support, again, Barrio should be fine, and his 10 and 6 record does not define, you know, how he has done this season because he has been really, really good. And he's going up against a guy who, again, who really knows? He pitched well against Texas, even though he got the loss. Uh, he has only two starts on the season, an ERA of 0.75, a 1 and 1 record, 13 strikeouts, a whip of 0.7. Of course, like I said, he's only pitched in two games. He got the win in Detroit when he went six innings, gave up no earned runs, and then he got the loss in Texas when he gave up one earned run. Um, so it's it's really going to be a toss-up. There's not much information on him, but if we can get to him early, I think Barrios will be okay. Because like I said, their defense or their offense is what comes back to bite teams. It's not really their pitching. Their pitching is good, right? It's good, but their offense has really stepped it up, and that's what's won them games. Our pitching has been iffy, but our offense is also good. So could it be a slugfest? Who really knows? But this should be a fun, 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 exciting series. Again, nothing less than a split. But if we could take three, if we could take four, we are going to be set for the rest of the season. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think about the series. What are your predictions? I want to know down in the comments below. Big series. This should be a lot of fun. Hopefully, we can take a couple of games and put them down in the division. That's all I got for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like. Subscribe. Check out the videos above my head if you missed them yesterday. And we'll see you guys tomorrow or next time because I got a lot of videos planned today. See you then.